My name is Jimmy Shaw. I play the band Metric. My studio is mostly old vintage stuff. Uh, I really like the sound of older stuff. I like character sounds. You know, there's a lot of a lot of newer gear that comes out, like you know, Millennia preamps or or uh, you know. I think there's a what's the, what's the the silver one that I'm thinking of, uh, anyway. But there's lots of newer stuff that sounds super clean and and like high gain and sounds like you know the sound of modern records. And I I prefer the sound of character stuff. I like when you plug something in and it sounds distinctly like itself and and sort of gives it a a, a vibe of records you know past and and sounds like that like things used to sound. So I have mostly like old. 50s and 60s tube gear and and like that old Neve which is from the 70s and my the main console in the studio is a Trident uh, 80C which is um, you know from about the mid 80s I think but still all transformer balanced and you know the, the thing weighs about a million tons it took six people to move into the studio and, and uh, but but the only really modern piece of gear that we use is Pro Tools HD because you kind of have to and uh, Tape sounds great, but it's a pain in the ass to use, and uh, tape's expensive, and uh, I think that everyone who is making records these days has gotten so used to the ways of making records on, in, on, on Pro Tools and in, in digital recorders, so uh, I think that the editing capabilities and multi-tracking and, and keeping playlists and all, all, all of the sort of basic functions that you can do in digital recording have become so integral to, to the to band's recording processes that it's uh, I think if you wanted, wanted to run any kind of studio you pretty much have to have Pro Tools. I think the only time I ever really worked with tape was in the very very first recording gear that I ever bought when I was still in school. Um, I, was, uh, I went to school for, for classical trumpet and at one point I got really sick of being around classical musicians. I found the whole thing very stale and uh, so I sold off like most of my trumpets and bought like an Ibanez, purple Ibanez Roadster 2 guitar, which was awesome, and, and a Tascam 8-track reel-to-reel. So uh, I used that for a couple of years, and then, I, and then I really went heavy into digital, and I think I had like a, like a Mac Quadra 650 or something with like a Digidesign Audio Media 2 card, you know, and you could do like two tracks of digital audio at the same time. And, and then, you know, I've pretty much had everything in between. You know, I think I remember getting Logic 3, Logic 3.0 or something like that. So when it was still owned by eMagic before Apple bought it, and uh, I've been I've been doing music on computers for pretty much my whole life. There's sort of this a bit a bit of the same concept when it gets to live for me in that I still really really like stuff that has character, and um, I used to play just sort of old combo amps all the time. I've, for years and years I toured with a a 65 Fender concert, which is very much like a super reverb, but uh, uh, just without the reverb, and a 59 magnetone. So it's like, I remember when we were loading out into a show at South by Southwest at one point, and Wayne Coyne from the Flaming Lips walked by as we, as we had all our gear stacked down on the street, and he saw my two amps and he goes, that's not a live rig, that's a vintage guitar store. And I always thought that was kind of, kind of funny, because you're not supposed to tour with that stuff. That's really supposed to live in the studio, but I kind of figure I'm going to live half my life on the road. I, I don't want to I don't want to play with gear that I don't like just because, you know, it might die one day. Gear is supposed to be used and then it can die a, a pleasurable death once it knows that it's lived a great life.